Now we move on to Chapter 3 in the OpenStax College Physics uh, textbook. Studying two-dimensional motion, we have been just working in one dimension, moving on a straight line. In the real world, motion is more complicated than that. So we need some new tools to be able to uh, correctly analyze motion in two dimensions. So here's, we're not going to analyze this, uh, but a roller coaster, you know, showing the uh, complicated uh, loops and turns and so forth. That's more three-dimensional. Uh, we'll, we'll stick with two-dimensional. So under two-dimensional, here's a photograph of a city street. You can go east, west, north, and south if the streets are laid out like that. And people can't travel in a straight line through buildings. Uh, so we have... Uh, to go you know, a certain number of blocks in one direction, then turn a corner at 90 degrees and go a certain number of blocks. Uh, so we'll be studying motion something like this, at least as a start. So here's a, a layout. We uh, start over here on the bottom left. We go nine blocks to the east. We go 15 blocks uh, up to the north. So did the person uh, have a displacement of 14 blocks? We went nine blocks to the east. We went five blocks to the north. This is the displacement 14? The answer is no. The displacement is straight line distance, the helicopter path from uh, beginning to end. And that will be a certain number. It will be at a certain angle. We're going to solve problems like this two ways. First, in this lecture, graphically. And in the next lecture, we'll use trigonometry. Uh, for homework and exams, primarily, you'll use the trigonometric method. Uh, the graphical method will be uh, available to you. You should do it to kind of get a rough idea what the answer should be. But our best result comes from doing the math operations using sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, when we do the math with uh, sine, cosine, and tangent, sometimes also we'll be interested in coming up with the hypotenuse. And we'll be dealing with a Cartesian coordinate system. The x and the y axes will be at 90 degrees to each other. And we'll have an x number, we'll have a y number, and we can find the displacement, the hypotenuse, uh, using Pythagorean theorem. Uh, sometimes it won't be displacement, sometimes this will be velocity. It'll be another common uh, calculation that we do. We'd have the velocity in the x direction, velocity in the y direction and come up with the net velocity. Um, so here's our helicopter uh, person. And how can we come up with these numbers? You know, they have 29.1 degrees here, 10.3 blocks. On the graphical method, we would take measurements. We would uh, lay out the proper scale. Uh, we would use a ruler to measure the length of the hypotenuse. We'd use a protractor to measure the angle. Um, and we won't measure it this accurately. But uh, that's, what, uh, that's what could be done. A key point here to notice is that 9 plus 5 cannot be done, actually. And 9 plus 5 would be 14 if the hypotenuse is 10.3. Uh, but I'll just start emphasizing this right away. You must never add an x number with a y number a number that represents something happening in the x-direction, whether it's displacement or velocity or acceleration, you must not add that to displacement or velocity or acceleration in the y-direction. You must work two separate problems uh, as we get later in this chapter. So I'll just start emphasizing that now. Um, so, I'll try to do this demo in class if you're in my class and uh, we start up here at the beginning one ball it just drops straight down a second ball starts to drop but it's been given a sideways push just for a brief instant of time there's not a continual push on the object but just initially it's pushed off to the right and then falls what do you notice about the motion in the vertical direction you know, we're going towards the earth down at the bottom here what do you notice about the motion in the vertical direction? Well, the ball has the same motion in the vertical direction. There's acceleration due to gravity on the pink ball. There's acceleration due to gravity of the same amount on the green ball. They both started with zero velocity in the vertical direction. 
velocity in the horizontal direction has no effect on the motion in the vertical direction. So just keep that uh, keep that in mind. The, this velocity here, this black arrow, is not causing any change in the length of the green arrow, the velocity downward. So here's our helicopter again. Notice that uh, we get the same hypotenuse if we take a uh, this red arrow instead of being on the right side. It's drawn over on the left side. So we can move these arrows around as long as we maintain their orientation and maintain the length. So here's the, you know, the graphical method again being illustrated. Use a protractor, use a ruler, and get the uh, get the displacement. <coughs> so when we have two vectors, when we add them graphically, it's called the head-to-tail method. Uh, vectors, uh, you know, displacement, velocity, acceleration. When we draw the vector, it has a head where the arrow is and has a tail where we start drawing the vector. And when we want to add a second vector graphically, we draw the first vector, and now we take the second vector and we start drawing it where the first vector stopped, where the head of the first vector is. Now we have the tail of the second vector, so head to tail. And then our resultant vector starts at the beginning where we drew the first vector and ends at the end of the second vector when we're just adding two vectors. So you can repeat this technique for three vectors, four vectors, as many as you have. Uh, most of the time we'll just have two. But head to tail method, you draw the first vector, you start drawing the second vector, you put its tail at the head of the first vector and you just uh, continue progress and then the resultant vector is the hypotenuse you measure its length with a ruler measure its angle with a, uh, a protractor so here's uh, you know, nine units in the x direction a plus nine here's our second vector being drawn at the head of the first vector and we have our resultant vector so that's the head to tail method of uh, adding vectors. So here's a little different case with three vectors. The vector A has a length of 25 meters at 49 degrees to the x-axis. Vector B length of 23 meters at 15 degrees to the x-axis. And vector C 32 meters and it's 68 degrees below the x-axis. And I will try to put a minus sign on angles that go below the x-axis. Just measuring the protractor, the magnitude of this angle is 68 degrees. How can we add these three vectors using head-to-tail method? Well, let's, uh, let's see away. I, this, uh, the textbook chose to draw the A vector first and now it has picked up the B vector instead of drawing it at the origin it starts to draw B at the head of A, head to tail. And this drawing is keeping the correct length of the arrow and keeping the correct orientation of the arrow. You have to kind of imagine a, a line here that's parallel to the x-axis and keeping the proper angle for vector B. Same uh, for vector C. Its length is the same as in the previous uh, slide and its angle 68 degrees below the x-axis. Mentally you have to kind of put a horizontal line here and draw the vector at its proper angle below the uh, line parallel to the x-axis. So what's the result of adding A, B, and C? Well the result vector starts at the beginning of the first vector at its tail and ends at the head of the last vector that was added. So our result vector is going to cross here. And there it is. Um, Ruler says 50 meters long, and protractor says 7 degrees below the x-axis. That's our result vector, vector R, the result vector. But adding uh, vectors head to tail, you draw them. As you pick up a vector from where it was drawn starting at the origin, you maintain its orientation, you, measure, you may maintain its angle compared to the x-axis, and you maintain its length. Uh, most of the time we will not bother 
uh, using a protractor up here to get the angle precise as precise as we can, nor will we use a ruler. We'll just freehand give a rough sketch that would uh, clue us in on whether our calculations that we do in the next uh, video are, are correct. So that's our technique. Do we have the same result here? Instead of uh, putting vector A first in the addition, we're choose, the book has chosen to put vector C first. The vector C, its length here, 68 degrees below the x-axis, and then draw vector A and then draw vector B. And you should notice that we get the same result. It does not matter which vector comes first when you do your drawing. You use each vector once if it's just a uh, factor of one in front of each vector, but it doesn't matter uh, what the order is. Uh, what about subtraction of vectors? Well, to do subtraction, we're actually going to do addition with a negative vector. And a negative vector has the same length, so this minus b, it's the same length as vector b, but its orientation is 180 degrees different. We put the arrow at the other end of the line. And we just flip this 180 degrees, and that's minus b, the negative of, of b. So here is A and B, um, <clears throat> and we're, we're wanting to subtract B from A. Well, I'd ask you uh, to think about calculations with numbers. Suppose I do 5 minus 3, that result's going to be 2. Do I get the same result if I add minus 3 to 5? The answer is yes. We can do an addition problem with the negative of the value instead of just doing subtraction. This is the technique we're going to use to subtract vectors. When we do a subtraction of vectors, we redraw the vector that we're subtracting. So this is b. Just in your mind, what's minus b going to look like? And what you should do is just take the uh, arrow off of that end, draw it down at this end. That would be negative b. And we're going to do vector addition, head to tail, with A and with the vector minus B. So here's minus B, and they're choosing to draw it at the x-axis. That's not necessary, but uh, it's okay. And here is A plus minus B, and here's our result. 7.5 degrees below the x-axis, the length of 23. So A minus B, another way of looking at this is A plus minus B. Minus B is the negative of vector B that used to have its uh, arrow at this end. Here is A plus B, and you see we get a different result. Uh, this is not the minus B, this is the plus B. So you have to be careful, you have to know whether you're adding uh, vectors or if you're subtracting vectors. It'll change from problem to problem. Um, so this kind of uh, is kind of a precursor to uh, our next uh, next unit when we get into the right triangles. But the vectors have what are called components. Here's this general vector A. It has an x component and it has a y component. And there's a special meaning to this equation. This is not an ordinary algebra equation where we'd add the numbers. This is a vector addition, and so if this length down here is 6, and this one is 10, if a sub x is 6 and a sub y is 10, this is not algebra addition, it's vector addition. The length of a is not 16. It's illegal to add the number 6 with the number 10. They're not in the same direction, but symbolically, this tells someone who knows about vectors, the bold here, is kind of the, the textbook's uh, clue that we're dealing with a vector, not a number. And uh, you have to use the head-to-tail method or the method that we'll learn in the next uh, unit. Um, before I go too much further here, um, what about multiplication? What would the vector 2a look like? Suppose, <clears throat> I'll just guess, suppose this is 15 units long. Vector a is 15 units long at uh, 50 degrees. What would the vector 2a look like? Well, 2a is a plus a, and 
what we would get instead of just the 15, we'd have 15 and another 15 in the same direction. So we'd have a length of 30 and the angle would not change. When we multiply vectors by a number, the length changes, the angle does not change. If we had 15 for the length here and 50 degrees for the angle, now we'd have 30 meters for the length and still 50 degrees for the angle. That would be the vector 2a. So that's where we're going to stop here. You should, uh, of course, keep reading and uh, practicing and asking questions.